beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. This is the Nitty Witch Podcast episode three. I am Vanessa Nitty Witch on Instagram and Nitty Hyphen Witch on Ravelry. You can also email me at nittywitchshop at gmail.com or if you go to my Instagram page, there's a little button there to email me and that will link you to my email address. You can also message me through my Etsy shop and you can find my shop at Nitty Witch Shop on Etsy or at nittywitch.com. I sell handmade stitch markers and knitting notions and other little fun knickknacks that are knitting related. I come to you from Dover, Delaware, where I live with my fiance, Brandon, our combined children, and my dog, Zeus. So, welcome back, everyone. Last episode, I realized that I was trying to win the marathon for who can talk the fastest. If there was an Olympic sport for speed talking, I think that I would have won. <laughs> so this podcast, I'm going to try to slow it down a little bit, take some breaths and not be so nervous, which brings me to kind of something that I wanted to touch on, which is my anxiety. I wasn't going to mention it, but I realized that for a long time, I felt like I was alone in the way that I was feeling and the way that I responded to things and come to find out that there's just a whole world of people out there who feel the same and have the same social anxieties that I do. So being in front of a camera is probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. I, I have sang in front of auditoriums. I have given briefings in the military. I've done so many things where I've had to speak, but for some reason being vulnerable in front of a camera that I can shut off at any moment is really, I don't know, it just gives me so much anxiety because I know that people are gonna see this. So every time I sit down to do a video, I have like seven panic attacks and <laughs> my palms get sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Just kidding, I'm not a rapper. <laughs> But I just want to let you guys know that if you're an anxiety sufferer, you're not alone. I am here with you. I am the basket case of all basket cases. So there we are in that, right? So this is a knitting podcast where I talk about all my fun crafty adventures. And that's what I want to do today. So let's get into that. I want to thank everyone who has liked and subscribed my videos who has purchased from my Etsy shop. I just, you guys are the greatest. You're the biggest support. And I find that you guys are my family. And I really, really thank you for being a part of my life. I love you all. And I wanna be friends with each and every one of you. I promise. <laughs> Hit me up, send me a message. I love talking. So. Last episode, I announced that since we had gotten to 100 subscribers that I was going to do a giveaway. So I pulled a giveaway winner with the YouTube comment picker, and that winner is Jen Gottschalk. So Jen, you are a winner, and Jen commented that she would like to win the cheat day or 80 stitch markers. So Jen, guess what? I'm going to give them both to you. So cheat day and 80s are on their way to you reach out to me via email send me your address and information so i could get that package sent out to you and congratulations jen that's awesome thank you so much for commenting everyone's comments were so sweet and so just positive and full of love and light and i couldn't ask for anything more. It's not what I was expecting. I guess I was just expecting a lot of negativity or some negativity to break through and it really just hasn't. So thank you so much for keeping this a positive place for everyone to come and be. Um, with that being said, I want to let you guys know that I am most active on Instagram in the morning. I wake up at about five o'clock every morning, maybe maybe sometimes four, <laughs> even though I, I should be sleeping. I just don't sleep well very much. And um, I'm most active on Instagram from those hours, from like five o'clock in the morning to like seven o'clock. So if I'm talking you up and I'm leaving comments and I'm chatting you, 
I swear I'm not a creeper. It's just because I'm awake and you're awake and I love to see who's up at that time and posting and I live vicariously through everyone via Instagram. I think that Instagram is my absolute favorite platform. It brings this whole community of knitters together and Ravelry kind of did the same thing but I'm really sad that Ravelry is where it's at today where there are people who have left because of their accessibility issues. It's not something that I'm going to talk about. It's just that um, I feel like there's a lot less Ravelry users than there was before. So Instagram is a very good platform for that. And if you're not on Instagram, I highly suggest it. I only follow knitters and yarn dyers and people in the fiber arts. And my Instagram is filled with nothing but positivity and yarn. And it is the highlight of my day. It really, really is. So. Like I said, this is a knitting channel and I have some knitting to show you, so let's get into that. For my first FO and only FO, I have for you Slip Stravaganza. Guys, I finished my Slip Stravaganza. It is blocked. I can't even get it. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is so beautiful. Look at this. I'm just going to give you guys a little preview of how long it actually is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a picture of the blocking process because it was actually a little bit funny. I have two sets of blocking mats. I think one set I have from Knit Picks and another set I have is the Knitter's Pride Mindful blocking mats. And I laid them all together and it was not big enough for the slip stravaganza. Brandon, in all of his sweetness, was like, I was just at Lowe's and I saw that they had play mats that are the same thing as the blocking mat. So he ran out to Lowe's for me and picked up these big, huge, like playground squares that I had to put together to use as blocking mats just to fit the size of this. I'm absolutely in love. What I'm not in love with is the fact that when I was blocking it, I found a hole. And I feel like if you watch the Nitty Natty, I'm sorry, if you watch Nitty Natty's Love and Stitches podcast, you would have seen that she had a hole in her slip stravaganza too. And I was horrified, absolutely horrified. And I was like, I don't know what I would do if that happened to me. Well, it did. So here is my hole. Now, I know you guys are probably saying that's not that bad, and it's it's really not, but to me, it's all I can see. And I'll show you the back side. Guys, I don't even know what I did. <laughs> I can't even be in, I don't know if I dropped the stitch, because it's not a run. So if I pull this here on the flip side, it straightens it out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Natalie's tutorial on duplicate stitching the hole and do that just for some added reinforcement. I'm really happy that it's fixable. I'm really happy that it's not a run. I'm a little less happy that there's a hole in it, but that's okay. It's going to be fine. So I'm going to pull out my notes from my knitting journal. This is my knitting dot journal and I'm going to let you guys know that this was a kit from Forgotten Fiber. So the mastermind behind this work of art is the dyer behind Forgotten Fiber. The work that she put into color placement and charting it out so that I can have an easy time knitting it 
was phenomenal. It is truly a work of art and I have her to thank for it. So thank you so much for making such a beautiful kit. It was out of her fingering weight socket to me base, 7525. And the colors were black, passion pink, orange you glad, hello yellow, limey, blazing blue, and purple people eater. And I knit this on a size four, 40 inch circular needle. Huh. I would say that if I were to knit this again, I would use a 47 inch cable. I really, it can be done on a 40. I mean, hell, it might even be able to be done on a 32, but it was really uncomfortable. And because of that, my stitches, my needle unscrewed and my stitches came apart and um, just too much flipping it over and just unscrewed my needles. Um, so when I do the shawlography knit along, which I'm going to be doing in October with Stephen West, I am going to be using a fixed, well, I was going to say a fixed cable, but let me not do that. I'm going to use in my Addy Click interchangeable 47 inch cable because I need the extra space. And right now I'm finding that the Addy Click join, they go in and they turn and they click and it doesn't unscrew. So I think that that's going to be the needle that I use. Sorry, that was, I kind of like lost it there for a second. But yeah, so this is my slip extravaganza. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'd like to say about it. I don't know. If you're going to be at Rhinebeck this year, please look for me. <laughs> Hopefully I'll make it easy for you. Please look for me. Please come say hi. I want to meet as many people as humanly possible and you'll be able to see me wearing this. So that is my slip extravaganza. All right. So let's get over to works in progress. One work in progress I wanna show is something that I'm not really working on right now because I am doing the fall garment make along and the pigskin party. And I started this before those knit alongs. So this is my vanilla sock from You Knit, I Die. Let me pull up my notes. All right, so this was the Freak Show set. It came with a coordinating purple mini. It's an 8515 four ply yarn. I am knitting this on size zero. Well, this is a hoe because this is the first sock finished. Here's the whip. This is the second sock. I am at the toe. So as you can see, I knit my toes and my heels with a 24 inch size zero needle. Now I do that because it's a little hard to do this on the nine inch circular. So I will knit the toe, toe up and then I will switch over to the nine inch circular needles when I'm done with the toe. And then I'll start knitting using those till the end. I use afterthought heels for my socks because most of the time I knit self-striping socks. I love self-striping vanilla socks. They're my favorite. And afterthought heels seem to look best with self-striping yarn. So I have marked here every 20 rows with these little light bulb stitch markers. So I know exactly how to make both of my socks exactly even. I know some people, this is not a big deal with it being even in this color, but in my striping socks, if they're not 100% matched up even, I will rip them out. <laughs> I am nuts like that. I love my socks to match, but that's not really an issue on this one because it's variegated. 
Also, look at these adorable stitch markers from Simply Serving. This was her Valentine's Day collection. It's a little cupcake with a strawberry on top. And this is a little rose teacup with a little cookie. Simply Serving on Etsy. Love her stuff. But anyway, it's back to the sock because there's a couple things I want to tell you about it. Now, I am using a size zero circular needle for this. And the reason why is when you knit with nine inch circulars, because of the way that you have to hold them, it loosens your gauge. I have consistently found that I need to go down a needle size from what I would normally get eight stitches per inch with. So I get eight stitches per inch knitting with a size 2.25 millimeter needle, which is a size one. So if I wanna get the proper gauge and I were to magic loop these socks, I would use a size one. Because I'm using the nine inch circulars, I use a size zero. Now, normally I would use a size one for the heels and toes to get the proper gauge and match gauge. The reason why I use a size zero and I go down a needle size is because your toes and your heels get the most wear. And because of that, I wanted to make it a more dense fabric at the toe and at the heel. So I went down and I know that I'm getting less, or I know that I'm getting a tighter gauge and that's okay. So normally I would use a size one all the way around straight through, but I'm using zeros to give me size one, eight stitches per inch gauge. So yeah. I do not use a pattern for my socks. I design all of my socks by myself. It's a formula that I learned when I first started knitting. Um, I find that every time I use a pattern, it doesn't fit me as well as I would like. So I just, I just make up my own as I go and uh, hope that it fits. <laughs> So that is my sock set. And I did this sock set as a share a pair with my friend Wanda. And we're knitting the same pair of socks. This is living in my studio in the green bag. Her name is Michelle. This is a really, really old bag. And I don't care. I love it. It's one of my favorite, favorite bags. I just heard from her and she said that she's planning on reopening her Etsy shop. So I am so excited for that. This is her sock sack. I'm gonna show you the inside. So this is the inside. It has a zipper pocket in the middle and it's separated into two sides. And you have these little clips right here to put your yarn through. If you were to have two skeins and we're knitting your yarn on two skeins, I'm sorry, we're knitting your socks on two skeins. You would put one skein in each of the pockets. I used to knit my socks two at a time simultaneously, as in two different needles, just going back and forth and knitting one for a few rows and then knitting another one for a few rows. Um, I don't do that anymore because I don't find that second sock syndrome is an issue for me. So it's just easier to wind the ball and start knitting than to separate the ball or the skein into two balls. Two balls, two cakes, however you like to knit it. But, sorry, there's someone outside right now and it's distracting me. <laughs> So that's that whip. My second whip is my sweater that I'm working on for the fall garment make along and for the Down Cellar Studio pigskin party. This is living in my Fates Thread bag of witches. I love this bag. It is one of her jumbo zipper bags. So much space. So I am knitting post-grad, which is a pattern by Alicia Plummer. Alicia is one of my favorite designers. I've said that before. So here's my progress. Please excuse the dog hair. <laughs> my dog sheds so much. And that's so funny because I always said that I would never have a dog that sheds. And I found Zeus at a shelter. He's a rescue. 
fell in love with him. And I don't care if he sheds. I don't care if he drools. I don't care if he stinks. I love this dog more than anything. <laughs> so please excuse my dog hair. So this is where I'm at. I've separated for the body. Let me turn this around. I am knitting the body right now. This is another adorable stitch marker from Simply Serving. This is the Halloween collection. So this is, excuse me, sir. There we go. This is a little haunted house, a little ghost. So I'm knitting this out of Neighborhood Fiber Company in their Studio Worsted Base. And it is the Cooper Circle colorway. So here's a funny thing that happened last night with this sweater. So I was knitting this sweater and I looked in my bag and I realized that I have one cake left. Woo! It's yarn everywhere. I have one cake left of the red. So these are 400 yard skeins. They're larger double skeins. So this is actually two skeins in one. So I do have my coordinating color and I have this and I'm knitting the sweater and I'm realizing I only have 800 yards. Like I need like 1200 yards for the sweater. Like what am I thinking? How do I not have enough yarn for the sweater? So I started thinking back to when I bought it. I bought this yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool years and years and years ago. I don't even remember it's been so long. So I remember when I bought the sweater, I bought enough, I mean, not when I bought the sweater, when I bought the yarn, I bought enough yarn to make the sweater, but I've gained some weight since then. So I started thinking that, well, maybe I only bought two skeins because I was gonna knit the smaller size and now I need the bigger size. So I'm freaking out guys, because I don't have enough yardage to finish the sweater. So what do I do? I go online to Neighborhood Fiber Company's website and I look up their worsted and lo and behold, they do make Cooper Circle in worsted. However, they have now since changed to an organic base and the base is not the same. So I ordered two skeins of it anyway because I figured that this cake will be enough to get me through the body and then I would need two more skeins to make the sleeves. So if the sleeves don't match, it's not gonna be the end of the world, right? It's just the sleeves. So this is all going through my head. I made the order, I made the purchase, I bought the extra yarn. I'm freaking out because I'm like, what if the bases don't match? What if the dye takes differently? What if you can see it? And this is gonna be like my Frankenstein sweater. I flipped my stash upside down. Every cubby, that's in my stat that I have yarn in, I flipped onto the floor looking for the skein of yarn. Couldn't find it. Ordered more this morning. I was like, you know, I swear I bought three skeins of this yarn. Where is it? It's in a basket in the corner. Yep, found it. <laughs> so crisis averted. Long story short, I now have two beautiful skeins of Studio Worsted in organic base coming to me in the Cooper Circle colorway. And I will be making that into something different. So <laughs> I am so happy that I did find the other skein that it's all gonna match. Everything is gonna be okay. I'm gonna be able to finish the sweater. It's gonna be all right. I'm trying to finish the sweater for Rhinebeck. I already do have my sugar coated, which I did show on the first episode, and that is gonna be my main sweater. But if it's cold, I will be there for Saturday and Sunday, and I would like a sweater to wear both days. So I'm gonna try to finish this. I do this to myself every Rhinebeck year. I have all year to make a sweater, and I decide that I'm gonna wait until the month before the festival to start knitting a sweater. And when I commented that I wouldn't be up sitting on a toilet at three o'clock in the morning finishing my sweater is because a few Rhinebecks ago, while all my roommates were sleeping, 
I was in the bathroom sitting on the toilet like this, knitting my sweater, trying to finish it. I wove in the last end of that sweater as we pulled up to the parking lot in Rhinebeck. There was actually like pieces of yarn coming off my sweater that you could like found like in the car and on the floor in all different places. But you know what? I finished it and I did it and it was excellent. And I'm trying to do this to myself this year. So I'm going to try to finish this as quickly as possible. Being that the slip extravaganza only took me a month to knit. Now, granted, I did nothing but knit on that shawl. I started it July 30th and I finished it September 7th, something like that. Finished it September 7th, so a little over a month. This is worsted weight. This is going by a lot quicker. So I feel like I can do it. I feel like this can be done. Cheer me on, okay? Cheer me on on Instagram, I'll be posting. Um, speaking of that, for the pigskin party, I am on team 19, we call ourselves on the lamb, and I have been interacting and every day Jen has asked us to answer a question, um, either in the Ravelry Fed or on Instagram. And um, we've done a couple questions so far, like what's your favorite yarn color to buy and stuff like that. So just so that we can learn a little about each other, it's awesome. I'm having so much fun with it. I love these like 30 day like photo challenges. They're fun. I love seeing what everyone is up to. So for acquisitions, I don't have anything yarn related, but I do have something really fun I would like to share with you. All right. So I was telling you guys that I'm into reading and I'm into video games and different things like that. I'm a big nerd. That's no surprise. I love all of the fantasy things, all of the horror. So my acquisition for this week is the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings box set. In mini. <laughs> I love miniature things and they released the whole book collection, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit in miniature book form. Like, can we say how cute is this? I will say that if you have um, struggles reading, it, the font is small. It is a little small, but I don't have um, any issues seeing close up. I have issues seeing far away. So I, even though the font is small, I'm going to be able to read it. But it was mostly just to have it because... It's adorable. I saw it in Barnes and Noble and um, I had bought it for a friend as a gift a few years back and they sold out of it for a while and I couldn't get one for myself and then they put it back in stock and I had to snag it up. So I have not made any more progress on the Shadowhunter series, but a couple of you commented that it was really good. So I'm still really excited about listening to that. Other than that, I have just been spending my time knitting and interacting with everyone via the YouTube comments and Instagram and sometimes Ravelry and Facebook. I haven't played any games. My game has been sitting there untouched. I haven't picked it up. I have been wanting to, but I'm so invested in, in this make along and the sweater. So my video games haven't gotten any love but that's okay, they'll always be there when I need them. I am a video game hoarder. I like to buy a new game and play it for a day or two or three and then never pick it up again. <laughs> Does anyone do that or is that just me? <laughs> oh my God, I'm such a goofball. I'm a collector of things. I like, I like collecting things, I have many collections which leads me to my tarot collection. If you guys have noticed on Instagram, I've been posting a card of the day and they're all positive, nothing negative. And that's what I like about the tarot is it doesn't have to be this negative thing that people make it out to be. It can really lead you with some positive inspiration for the day. So I have about 70 different tarot decks 
that I have collected. I collect them based on the artwork. Um, and I think that they're just like little works of art. So I have an extensive collection of those. I have ordered a couple more decks are on their way to me. So that's what I've gotten my hands into. I do have a couple other acquisitions, but they're on the way. I have ordered a few things off of Etsy and a couple other um, shops. And once they get here, I'll be able to share those with you. So. Before I go, I want to leave you guys with an inspirational quote. It seemed that you guys all liked the last one, and I hope that it really inspired you guys to get out there and, and make someone's day. So your inspirational quote today comes from my wall. I have vinyl above my television, and it's a quote from Winnie the Pooh. And it says, promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And that is true. You are all so beautiful. So remember, be beautiful, be you, and make magic wherever you go. Bye guys, catch you next time. Mm -hmm.